Now, joining me from the UK is GB News presenter Calvin Robinson. Calvin, Christmas is almost here, and yet we have leftist politicians, celebrities, activists who can't bring themselves to say the C word. They're happy to acknowledge uh, other religious holidays, but not one that is uh, sacred to Christians. Exactly. First of all, Merry Christmas, Rita. Have a very good Christmas when it finally gets here. And you're right, these lefties, they cannot say it. And I think it's because they are anti-Christian and they're anti-Western and they understand the power of the word Christ and what it means to say Christmas. So they'll say, you know, have a peaceful Eid Mubarak, have a happy Diwali, have a happy Hanukkah. But when Christmas comes around, it's have a joyful holiday season, have a happy winter closure period. And these aren't made up. These are actual terms that people have been using. You know, Brighton University over here said have a happy winter closure period. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex said have a joyful oh. holiday season. What holiday season are they talking about? Christmas. It's bonkers, isn't it? Just say the oh, word. Oh, dear. Exactly. And, and you know what? The people they are supposedly protecting, those who are non-Christian, have absolutely no objection to this. I mean, they, they so often say we're doing this to be inclusive and, and to be uh, uh, respecting those who are from migrant communities who are not Christian, but that is a nonsense. I can tell you most migrants uh, have zero issue with it and they actually embrace a lot of these Christian traditions themselves. Even if they're not believers, they'll have a Christmas tree or they'll, um, you know, hand out presents and all the other uh, things we do that bring us joy. Now, we do have parts of the world, though, we've got to acknowledge, where Christians continue to be persecuted, uh, particularly in countries like Nigeria, North Korea, Pakistan, many countries around the world. In fact, 360 million Christians live in nations with high levels of persecution or discrimination. And we've had close to 6,000 Christians killed for their faith in the past year. Those stats according to Open Doors. Uh, it's something that doesn't get the attention it deserves, the plight of Christians in, in countries like Pakistan and Nigeria where uh, they're a minority. Yeah, Christianity has become the uh, most persecuted religion around the world. But of course, no one wants to talk about that either. It seems that it's fashionable to be intolerant towards Christians in the West. And I do believe this is because the neo-Marxists understand that they have to destroy two things in order to destroy the West, Christianity and the family. They've pretty much already destroyed the family. It's unfashionable to discuss the idea that we should have a mother and a father in a house these days. And now it's become even more unfashionable to talk about Christianity as a religion of the West and that built Western civilization. So they're, they're winning and we need to fight back. But what's worse than that is we're seeing this persecution hit home. So right now in this kind in the UK, we've we've had a woman, a lovely woman called Isabel, that's been arrested for silently praying in her head. Now that's the kind of persecution I'd expect to see somewhere like Iraq or Iran. But in the UK, a woman has been arrested for praying. And this is because of these buffer zones that they've put up around these abortion clinics in order to protect people from um, protest while they go to receive an abortion, which I mean, people can have different stances on abortion, fine. But the idea that it should be, ever be a crime to think something in your head or to pray in your head, I, that is thought crime. That's 1984. That's exactly what it is. You know, it is wrong think. And we've reached that stage where elements of 1984 are becoming real. It's no longer a cliche. It's no longer a story of a warning. It's, it's living practical reality. In